What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. It's the first time joining the show. Welcome to the show. Got a good one. Joel McHale. Joel McHale. Man, does this guy do a lot. He is the most worked dude in Hollywood. Uh, he's constantly working. He's so funny, so sweet. Such a cool dude. A car enthusiast like myself. Likes to vroom vroom. Uh, very handsome. My God. My God. Leveled me up just a little bit. You know, rising tide lifts all ships. Such a funny dude, Joel McHale. Happy to have him on the show. Go watch his shows. This guy has 50 million shows on the air. Uh, and you know what? That's enough rambling. Let's let's just go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Junior. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Joel McHale. Joel McHale is on the show. Thank you. Only took a couple years to get the guy on the show. He's yep, a busy, I busy was man. Very busy, You're but a busy guy. it's great to be here. And I, I get it, dude. I'm, I'm happy to have um, you on my show. I have five minutes. Five? Yeah, good. We'll wrap this up. Great. Uh, thanks, um, thanks for coming for on. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. And I did not know you were such a car nut. I'm a big car dork. Yeah, I, uh, I I do love cars. It's probably the only thing I care about even a little bit. Golf? I love golf, but it's not like a... Um, it's not the same. No, because like I... the It's not like the equipment I'm obsessed with. The, like some guys get the new shit all the time. I don't care about that. That I doesn't agree. really... Like I, I, agree. I like to play golf a lot, but I'm not like have to have the new tech. Like I, there's a guy that I'm friends with that will literally every season have... New sticks, uh, you know, has gone to a bunch of lessons and went to yeah. fittings and all and this he stuff. he sucks. Yeah, he sucks. Yeah, of course he sucks. Yeah. yeah. When I see those guys on the course and they've got all the little, they got their outfit on, uh -huh. it's all planned, they got that little towel and they have their new stuff and it look, you're like, oh, this guy's going to be great. Mm -mm. And then they're terrible. The sloppiest guys I know are the best golfers. I mean that. Like there was a kid yesterday, Fitzsimmons and I played in this charity tournament and, uh, the kid who won the long drive both times, closest to, like, all this stuff, was probably 6'3", 6'4", 245, but no, not muscle. Right. This was just body. Right. Just male body. Yeah. Slouchy pouchy, pooch over the, over the belt. And nice kid, but I was like, you would have never picked him out of a crowd and been like, that kid is a phenomenal golfer. He's it just doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 He's, well, it's also golf in a weird <laughs> way because you don't have to be – in real shape. You kind yeah, of. Yeah, I just, you, you, you just heard me say that. I mean, you can walk, you have to be able to walk. Yeah, you have to be able to walk. You, obviously, you have to have the mental thing. The best golfers in the world now are in the best shape, though. That's kind of the twist of all this now. Like. Are they? I would say the only, I mean, <clears throat> I would say the top 10 guys are all athletic, right? Kepka's in great shape, yeah, works out every single all day. That's very true, yeah. Rory works out every single day. Gone are the days of Chichi Rodriguez. Love. And John Daly, dude, some, John ripping, Daly. A, ripping a whole pack of darts as you play. He's still playing, still doing it, but yeah, I think the difference is the more athletic build you have, the more you work out, the better fine-tune your body's going to be yeah. for the yes, stretch. I would agree. That being said, no shots fired. ASU alum, John Rahm, great guy. Love you so much. Not a phenomenal shape guy. He's not in phenomenal yeah. shape, and he's a killer. So maybe 50-50. Uh, all right. uh, we'll okay. have to play. We'll have to play sometimes. Same thing with professional football. Yeah, those guys are all out of shape. Yeah, when you look at DK Metcalf on the Seahawks, you're like, I can't believe that guy's in the NFL. Yeah, it doesn't deserve to be. No, 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 no. He, he should be have at a, a checkout line at all. somewhere. Yeah, that's all sarcasm. <laughs> I have to point it out. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. You're such a you're a hardcore twelfth uh, man. I, I forgot. Am. I forgot about that. You. I forget sometimes your your roots because you don't you don't feel like Seattle to me. Is that offensive? Uh, what do I feel like? Um, you feel like a, like a Midwest guy. Okay. Like someone I grew up with a little bit. Like large? Nah, you just feel like a, like a, yeah, like a kid from the Midwest that played football. That's so if what, I was wearing like a Patagonia, uh, vest, yeah, that, maybe some Birkenstocks. Then I'd stocks. say you're up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. don't have the vibe of Seattle. All my friends from the Pacific Northwest, the, um. The Rain Wilsons? I'm not friends with that guy. Not after what happened with him and I. Okay. We got into a fight. Oh, who won? <clears throat> he did. Oh. Handedly. Oh. Yeah, he he's knocked out this tooth. This is these are two fake teeth. Yeah, on, it was in it was on Abbott Kinney, waiting for a you restaurant. Should get those uh, fixed. Uh, uh I got to leave him out just to remind me of what Rain did. 
Even with the eating and stuff, it doesn't it's fine. I, I everything I have is soft food. I can only have soft food from wow. Uh, did you drink last night? I did not. Do I look like I did? No. Come on, man. You can tell me if I'm looking. No, bad. I was just looking at the uh, my collection of booze. It's well, very impressive. Well, we're not drinking right now because it's very early. It's in the early, morning. guys, and it's, believe me, it's you like, ooh, but we're it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, and it's early. No, I do. You know, it's do so you funny exercise is, every day. I do every yeah. every other day. Okay. I've changed it now because the road is killing me. Me and Bobby have been on the road for months and my God, is it impossible to get a schedule going on the road? Cause we wake up in a new city. Yeah. You go get some kind of food that's nearby. Then you're like, I work out uh, sometimes in the hotel. Sometimes I work out at the venues. Yeah. I got to say, uh, one of the stagehands said to me, um, Lars, Lars, Lars from Metallica, Lars. Yeah. I think he was saying how he would do yoga and stretch in the rooms and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, because I was a little embarrassed. I, I brought my bands and everything. And I was like, I'm going to go just work out in one of the rooms. So I just opened my iPad and I did like a little class or whatever. That's awesome. And it felt amazing. And I was like, this is what it would be like to be uh, living on the road as, in a band. Because those guys do way more cities than we ever could dream. And they yeah, have to out. live on buses. And it's the stretch is absurd. How many yeah. more shows they play. And I thought, how else could you do this other than getting in a hotel and doing it? And hotel gyms sometimes suck. That's but I got to tell you, I kind of preferred working out with bands and yoga by myself in the room. Something about it was like, it was freeing in a weird way where I, I didn't feel like I had to, whenever I go inside of a gym, I feel like I ha like my brain starts to get, all right, well, what, what cycle of things are you going to work on today? Right. Whereas this, I felt like it was calm. Time was passing. It didn't really matter. Yeah. I wasn't. They told myself. you what to do. Yeah, I like that. I was like, this is kind of fucking great. It was easy on me, you know? And then you did a little cocaine. Just one bump, and, and then, then you got to get going. Said I'm a golden god and leapt on stage. People do think I do cocaine, but I've never done it. I just have a mind and a mouth that works this way. Yeah, I think you're on it now. You do? No. Have you ever done cocaine? I've never done cocaine. Look at this. Look at us. Yeah. Probably the only two guys in Hollywood who have never done cocaine. I would agree. Yeah, because every, every time I've been everywhere... Yeah, Even the most. least likely people are like, I'm like, you do cocaine? Yeah. I would have never guessed you do cocaine, Rain At Wilson. the DMV, I asked those folks. Mm -hmm. At church, yeah. <laughs> Did you, you guys, grow up religious? You guys high? Uh, I grew up uh, Catholic. Yeah. Uh, I was an altar boy. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Well, great sex. And uh, <laughs> yeah, my brothers and I were altar boys. And it was, uh, it was like a hometown Catholic church. So I went to school there. Yeah. You were a Catholic school boy. Yeah, well, from fifth to eighth. So I went to public school, then to Catholic school, then back to public school. And it was a small town, so everybody knew kind of everybody. Do we say the name of the town or we don't say the name of Mercer the town? Mercer Island, Washington. Mercer Island. Oh, yeah. that's really, I know where that is. Yeah, it's right next to Seattle. <clears throat> now, I've said this before on this show, but some of, I've, we've talked about our, our best days. Uh, and I'm going to ask you in a second because we had a conversation about it in the car ride. What's one of the best days of your life? And one of mine was... Um, uh, I was walking around Queen Anne, was waiting to meet up with some friends. And I went to a little brewery there and I went into a shop uh, and I grabbed just a little joint, a little pinner to go. From went, uh, Sean Kemp's dispensary? Sean, well, I don't know whose it was. It was like a mom and pop shop. And okay. uh, I wish I know the name because I can see it in my mind. And there's a little brewery and I smoked a little pinner and I bought a table of people a, a beer just because I wanted to sit and have conversation. I said, can I buy you guys a round? And they were like, yeah, for sure. And we sat and we just chatted and it was, they were really nice and kind. And then I went down to Alki Beach. Oh, you, you caught a Uber all the way to over to Alki? From yeah. From Queen Anne? I all was right. meeting someone down in Alki. Okay. I was in staying in Queen Anne. And uh, I, I, took, I took a ride out to Alki Beach and um, had one of the best days of my entire life. Got a little stoned, a little drunk, went out on the beach, met a bunch of strangers. And I was, and I literally said as I laid down on a paddle board. I was like, this is one of the best days of my entire fucking life. Like it was one of the best, it was just, everything was perfect. The weather was nice. The food was good. I was just enough people stoned nice. and just enough drunk. And the people were so, everyone was pleasant and chill. The guy, the paddle board I was on was some guy that was like, you know, you could take it out. And I was like, seriously? He's like, yeah, take it out. Go ahead. I was like, this is the, one of the best days of my entire life. That's amazing. Shout out to Seattle. Where did you sleep that night? 
On the beach, on Alki Beach. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My credit card got declined, and so mm. I couldn't go back to the. So it wasn't the greatest hotel. night of your life. No day, greatest day, right. one of the greatest days of my the life. The day, the night turned. Give me one of the best days of your life, Joel. Boy, hmm, that is one uh, of. It's not like saying what's your favorite movie. I hate those. Like you can't do one. All right. What's um, one day that this you... is going back to the eighties? Um, was during um, Expo '86. I was like thirteen, uh, fourteen or fifteen, and. We went to this place called Granville Island, which mm-hmm. is in uh, Vancouver. And Been there. There used to be a water, little just public water park with, with uh, yeah, that shot water. You could shoot people with water. And mm-hmm. it was just a bunch of – it was me and my brothers and a bunch of young Canadian uh, – uh, Canadians of this relative same age. And uh, my parents were sitting there eating and drinking off to the side. And then they, I think they just disappeared and we just played in this water park all day long. And I was like, that was one of the best days of my life that this is so great. This let's do this all the time. And I literally, well, been, I've been working in Vancouver, gone back to Granville Island and I found that little spot. It's no longer, uh, it's got all the stuff. Like it's, you can see it's kind of a, the concrete is still there, but they've removed everything. Cause of course it was Probably too dangerous. Some kid got waterboarded. He was <laughs> held over one of the water spouts, and that was the end of that. But um, yeah, that's I don't know. There's a lot of those. Uh, yeah, isn't that something though? When you go back to the place, I read. Uh, I want to say Sam Harris. But oh, I, and I took cocaine. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, good. I was gonna I say. Did you end it with a little super little root and tootin'? I think Sam Harris or someone. I think that was who said it. But it's not the it's not the place that you miss, but it's the time. <clears throat> and whenever I go back to nostalgic places, I do realize, oh, it's the time. It was the moment in time. It's not the place. Like it's not Alki Beach. It's not the right. It, it's the, the it's that moment in time that it's really hits you in a in a way that uh, it's because I've gone back to stuff. Try to read. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of does. Even when I just want to go back to see it and feel it. Yeah, I'm never no, going to relive I, it, and it still just is like, okay, this is fine. Yeah, I think about, like, when I played Little League, I think about, like, specific home runs that I hit, and I can think about, like, how it felt when I swung the bat, and I'll be yeah. like, yeah, that thing that happened where that piece of wood connected with that little ball, I was like, oh, I'll never forget it. Or those and, moments when you see your friend get hit in the nuts with something, and you're like, I'll remember how hard I laughed like that yes. for the rest of my entire yes. life. Yes, yeah. I'll, re- I'll remember when my friend walked up to a statue and simulated having <laughs> anal sex with it and we took photos <laughs> and I'm like, Brad, I'll never forget this. This is a beautiful moment. Powerful. And yeah, we're so, we're just, lo- we're very lucky we live in a world where we can have those moments. Yes. Cause, then, Cause I don't know if you do this thing that I do, I'll be like, cause right now there's uh, a lot of. Ukrainians fighting for their homeland, and I'll, that's where I go back to. I'll be like, or I'll be like, oh, and then there was that terrible train disaster in India like mm. four days ago, and I'll think about that. And then I'm like, okay, you evened it out. The Catholic kicked in. Yeah. yeah. You, well, you do have to have some guilt, and you're an Irish kid. Irish and Norwegian. Yeah, Irish Catholic guilt is strong. It is. I've gotten rid of most of it, but it's still there and sometimes helpful. Good for you. You? Dude. I'll never get rid of it. I'm I am I'm repulsed by everything I've ever done. I hate You even have kind of an Irish lilt to your speech. Yeah. I don't even no. know where that comes from. Maybe I think it's cause uh I don't know, my grandparents. I have no I have no idea where it comes from. But I, but the guilt is so heavy in my heart for everything. Like I can even feel my grandfather being like you should be a little mm, embarrassed. What is that? You should yeah. be embarrassed of how you act. Of how uh, like. Oh, was he Irish? <laughs> Irish? Yeah, Irish. Irish. Oh. Yeah. Well, my grandmother. Look at me, dude. I look at the map yeah. of Ireland. Yeah, you do. You do. I, t- uh, have you been? Yeah, I just went again last year. And are they? They just. I'm assuming they assume. Obviously. You know what's funny? Half of the people think. Half of the people think you're, uh, you know, a Brit, because British and Scottish more redheads than Ireland. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough. There's so many redheads. When I go to England, I they think I'm a local Brit. In fact, right. they'll come up to you and do that thing, where if they've got a question, they assume you're a local. Yeah. You know, Molly one mate. You know. You know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, I don't. Uh, and they're I like, don't. Uh, oh. Piccadilly Circus <laughs> is where. No problem. No, thank you. But we went to uh, with Kill Kill Kenny, and uh, man, did I love I. I have such a crush on Ireland. It's, yeah. It, like it's, I've never been. Oh, you got I'm going go. in a week and a half. Are you really? 
Yeah, I've Holy only shit. been I've been in Northern Ireland, which I found great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, Belfast. Yeah, Belfast and, uh, is great. But this is first time I'm going to Dublin and you know drive a little bit, and I can't wait to walk into every pub and go. Oh, I had ancestors from here, <laughs> and then they can. And it's an American guy bartending. It's like, yeah. great, man, fourteen ninety six. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, go if you have a chance. If you rent a car, I we highly are. recommend. If you have time, are you going to Cliff Samore and the western side or anything like the that? The western side, yes. So you are going out there. So go yeah. to from Dublin, Cliff Samore and Shannon and all that stuff. And uh, if you have a weird chance to get south of Dublin to Till Kill Kenny, I genuinely couldn't recommend it more. It's like it's it's like a two mile road of a town, and that's all it is. And it's just pubs, restaurants, little kind of nooks and crannies. A beautiful uh, castle, amazing little churches, and m- some of the best people, food, and music I've ever had in my entire life. Where, you know, Dublin is a thriving city. Yeah. Y- you're going to get Dublin. I-, I call those kind of European cities like anywhere USA because you're like, this is every big city I've ever seen. It feels like it could be Philly, Baltimore. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just got everything. Uh, but once you get out. Once you get out, man. And once you go to like Kilkenny, stuff like that, you're like... It feels like it's you're stuck in time a little bit. You're in a little like it's a little time machine. You get to go back. We went to a little pub and the guy was stuck like stuck in 1999, <laughs> maybe like 86, 87. Okay. The guy was like, uh, "You ought to come back for for a song tonight." And I was like, "Oh, we, we yeah, we'll, we're we'll, doing we'll, Frankie we'll, goes to Hollywood." <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Have you do seen it. Weird Science? <laughs> Have you seen oh, it? We're reenacting it. It's amazing. But he said you got to come back for a song, room. and I said okay. And sure enough, after dinner. Me and the old lady, we went, I, we were like, should we go to that, that guy? We, I mean, we don't, I obviously don't owe that guy anything. Right. And then we did. And I was there till three, four in the morning, listening to people sing songs. And I was like, this is kind of the magic shit that you think you want. Yeah. And it worked out. And it, yeah, it's the unexpected. I'm excited for you. Uh, yeah. Well, taking the whole family. To- taking the crew. And, uh, my brother and his family are coming. So it'll be, wow. it'll be a busy time. No work though for Joel. None. Good. Weird. You work too much, man. That's not true. That's what they say. I get a phone call and they go, Mikhail works too much. Joel works too much, Mikhail. That's what they call you. I, mm, who? Yeah, the whole biz. The whole biz? Yeah, Mike Biz. You know Mike Biz? He's a dick. He's a dickhead. Great, great rapper. I want to say this about you. Uh, okay. Generous guy, sweet man, big feet. Big feet, yeah, size 14. And a huge dick. Uh, do your dick goes in your shoes? Uh, no, I have one on my dick. On your pelvis? Yeah, I put another, I would buy two pairs of shoes and use the third. Interesting. Uh, I am, thank you, but I uh, I love, I love working. You do so a great do you. job. You of... tour so much as well. Yeah, I'm trying to do a lot of stuff. I'm so, trying. Are you okay you know, with, You uh... know, you have to be a maniac. Yeah, to be in this business, you got to be kind of loopy, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you have to, you know, be pretty, you know, uh, you got to work hard. You, your show... That you're on right now. Yes. Are they doing it again? The Animal Control? Animal Control. Or Crime Scene Kitchen premiering. Well, Crime Scene Kitchen is going to come out on ABC. No, Fox. It's Fox, last, Fox. Fox, last night. Last night, it's already out right now. Yeah. Go watch Crime Scene Kitchen. It's where uh, they have the uh, remnants of a dessert and they try to figure out what it is. Yes. That's true, right? That is all true. Yeah, see, I and see. Then, see uh, I pay attention. Some find a dead body. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. It's But pretty... Animal Control, who knows? It's picked up, yes. It is? God bless. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Yet I mean, another with the season. strike, who knows when it'll be back, but, uh... You know... Yeah. I hope. think I think, I think think they're gonna resolve it sooner than people think. I think the whole running joke in Hollywood is like, it's gonna last forever, and you're like, I don't right, know. Right, now, people have said, like, January 2026. People yeah. want to work. Mm-hmm. I think people... I think yeah. it's enough people want to work that they'll go, let's do it, let's just get this thing... Over with. Uh, it, yeah. I hope, well, now, well, today, as of today, mm. SAG might go on strike. Uh, yeah, I, I got a call from Fran Drescher. Do you, did you get that phone call? Was it a recording? Yeah, Fran no, Drescher. I never a, get any of that. Oh, uh, it's funny. It called, I, I, my number for my, is attached to my Google phone. For people at home, the union will call you and be like, don't forget to vote. And our president now is Fran Drescher. She's like, hi, Fran Drescher calling. Please vote yes to strike. <laughs> it's like, it's my favorite. Okay. Okay. I'll see you on Sunday at five. Bye. 
Uh, I save uh, all those, by the way. I save all those messages. Because you think, think they're, they're thinking specifically to you? Yeah, it's for me. Hi, Andrew. She does say She's Andrew. Like, Hi, Andrew. <laughs> um, It's Fran. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I voted yes, dude. Go ahead, do it. I don't care. Whatever. I think, I don't know what's going to yeah, Strike but, it, baby. Uh, Yeah, that, uh, are you, are you WG member? No, I'm not. I was years ago, and then I got out when I stopped uh, doing union writing gigs. I was getting small things to punch up on this and do this and do this. And it wasn't worth it financially. So I was like, I can't be You're in the like, guild. I will go be a very successful stand up and car owner. Mm-hmm. I'll just do stand up and all that other stuff. Yeah. That's pretty smart. Well, cause Hollywood is so fickle. Like I watched this thing with Johnny Depp the other day, you know, Johnny Depp, I'm not saying but he's the guy to listen to, but he was like, I'm, I don't know if I have room for Hollywood or it has room for me anymore. I was like, that's pretty interesting. Cause it is kind of like at some point, do you want to do it? And do they want you anymore? Is a delicate balance. Yeah. I mean, obviously he is in a very unique spot. Yeah. But he's still, I mean, for, for money wise, he's still such an earner for them. So yeah. I don't know if he has any left, according to that one Rolling Stone article four years ago. Isn't that crazy? How how could you lose? How do you lose? What did they say? It was a couple hundred million? Yeah. How do you lose a couple hundred million dollars? I feel like that was an interesting article, obviously, but it's like, you got to... Uh, was there any follow up to that? Like, does he, is he actually broke? Yeah. I I wonder, I don't know about any of that stuff when they say like, yeah, I mean, we knew MC hammer (laughs) flew through his money because he had a 100 person entourage and we saw it. We physically watched it happen. You can't have that many Rolls Royces. (laughs) It's going to be tough. You can't. At one point, I think he took a private jet. I heard a story. He took a private jet to another private jet. Like wanted to fly, but like didn't decided not to take the ride, you know. But took a jet to a jet. And wow, <laughs> that's impressive. That's so funny. But that is that's... when you're like, watch me. Someone's like, you can't blow through. Watch me, right? Are and you... I will do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if someone said, "Can you blow four hundred million dollars in a year?" I would be like, "No problem." I yeah, can you do, can. I can do it in six months if yeah. you want. <laughs> you can. It's absurd. Yeah, and like the Tyson of it all. But yeah, exactly. It won't. If we saw it in public, it made sense. But for someone like Johnny Depp, I would have never just assumed. Yeah, I would think with all the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff that it would, you'd be, yeah, they would just hand you a machine that makes money. Yeah. And then you just crank that thing and you're like, you need, here, just crank that. You're tired that. of cranking, that's all. Yeah, here's a hundred grand, go to the grocery store. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like, yeah, Johnny Depp, no matter almost what he, you know, there's somebody is going to go see his movies. A lot of people. He's, Everybody. As you, he's tenured he's like yeah like solid gold a-list he's, i want to go see his like if he does a movie now i want to see what because yeah. i'm interested he's a brilliant actor who i who was uh the best looking man in hollywood yeah he was a high what was your favorite depth film uh edward scissorhands such a good movie. it's such a good movie tim burton just like a, a mad did you ever go to see tim burton's exhibit at the uh no it was so good I went and saw Stanley Kubrick's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, also good. Uh, But yeah, that Tim Burton's brain. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, yeah. Edward Scissorhands, good pick. I would say, I would say. For Johnny Depp movies or for. Yeah, Johnny Depp movies, Johnny Depp movies. I would say, I'm going to say Gilbert Grape because it was so weird and wild and different. It was just so like, the story was crazy. Oh, so good. Oh, my God. You yeah. guys got some bangers in the can, kids. Imagine there's young kids that have no idea any of that stuff. They know him as the pirate, the pirate. Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. know him as Jack Sparrow. Yeah. And if um, you were like, no, Jack Sparrow, you know, used to have these other things. And that kids are like, well. I yeah. I mean, Crybaby, which with the John Waters film he did. Oh, yeah. One of the first was amazing. Like, so funny. It's so good, too. I remember uh, John Waters telling he knew that because Johnny Depp was just becoming, you know, was coming off of 21 Jump Street. And girls were freaking out uh, over, like, on set. Mm-hmm. Like, and he, and John Waters was like, oh, I think this guy's going to be a massive movie star because girls were stealing his uh, bucket uh, from his trailer that he was defecating into. You know, what? like, they were trying to... Just stealing a shit bucket? Yeah, just stealing a shit bucket. Wow. Which is a unique problem for popularity when you're we I mean that's that's yeah. that 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 can let you know hey it's I might have some juice 
Squarespace is the place to create your own beautiful site. I've talked about Squarespace for so long now on this show. It's because they have all the components and tools for you to make a beautiful, engaging site. Uh, they have member areas and appointment scheduling, which I really love. Look, if you're a personal trainer uh, or you're a coach or a teacher of some kind um, and you want to schedule classes or sessions, you can do it right from your Squarespace site. Clients can easily see your availability, reschedule if needed. Uh, this takes the hassle out of coordinating calendars with many clients as your business grows. No matter what, whether you're selling something, whether you're producing something or just showcasing yourself, if you're like, hey, I just want to make a site to show off what I do. Squarespace can help you get that done. But if you're looking to connect with clients, clientele, uh, or fans or whatever, there's email campaigns. They've got these, uh, this campaign that can collect email subscribers, convert them into loyal customers. Um, it's incredible. They also connect all your social media accounts in one place. So you can click, you know, connect your Facebook and your Instagram and your Twitter, your LinkedIn, all of your sites in one place. So you're easy to find and it's easy to merge. Uh, the best part for me personally, what we love is to use the analytics. You can use these insights to grow your business, learn where the site visits are coming from and the sales. And you can use this to find out where your next stop is or where your next product is going to be shipping to uh, in the best way. For us, it helps me sell tickets in certain areas. Uh, and it really helps me find out where the clicks are coming from uh, to tell me what city I'm going to be coming to, baby. So if you are someone who's looking to create a new site, uh, and you don't know where to turn and, and you want the best resources available, Squarespace has got it. Head over to squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. You're ready to launch. Use the offer code whiskey for you to save 10% off here. your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. I've thieved a few things. I, I will say now that the episode is out, the last season, the last episode of this season of Dave uh, this, sh this little show yeah. I do, we had Bradley Pitt on, uh, and I, they get, they, they went shopping for Brad and the, the wardrobe team was like, you're not going to believe this. You're pretty similar size of Brad. And I said, really? It's like almost the same height, almost the same weight. And she was like, same shirt, same waist, same shoe. And I was like, pretty rad. Everything else is different, but that's that that those things line up. Yeah. And she says, We're gonna go shopping for Brad for all this stuff, you know? And it was really nice stuff. Of course. And he wore none of it, you know. Like I think he he might have worn one thing. Yeah. On the, and then afterwards I was like, I'm gonna go in his trailer and steal all that shit. Oh. Because it's my size. And they were like, Really? I was like, Yeah. So I went in there, so I stole Brad Pitt's jeans. Four or five of his shirts. So I got your shit, Brad Pitt. Come see me, baby boy. I got all your stuff. The chances of him I'm actually listening. He listens. To this. He listens. Oh yeah. He told me he goes, dude. I listen. I could never be on that show, but I listen to it. He, he goes, and if you have somebody cool on like Joel McHale, then I'll definitely tune. I'll watch it and I'll listen to it. You're a wonderful liar. I, that's what he says. That's you what BP says, baby. So good. That's the BP, not me. Uh, I was on this show called Star Girl. Mm -hmm. Wait for the applause. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Breck uh, Bassinger, star of the show, amazing. Uh, but uh, Jeff Johns created it. Thank you. I'm just going to give everyone credit. Yeah, Luke please. Uh, I think Amy it's Smart. the Emmys. Um, and uh, my character, uh, he had. They were like, uh, he wants to leather, wear a leather jacket, and and they gave. There was a selection of jackets, and there was a Tom Ford jacket, mm. and I was like, yeah, that's that's the best one. Yeah. And uh, they're like, okay, yeah, well, we got to get three. Holy shit. And uh, because you need doubles, you have stunt doubles. Sure. And then they got to put holes in one so you can be uh, hoisted up on uh, cables. And I was like, yep, yep. And so then at the end of the season, because uh, <laughs> we weren't sure if the show was coming back because mm -hmm. CW uh, canceled all the shows, I was like, so, I mean, what are you guys going to do with them? Yeah. And they were like, well, if we get another season, will you bring them back? I'm like, yep, absolutely. Yeah. And then I was canceled. So you got those three jackets, yeah. baby. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. That's so. That's, I I ask every time, every time I do yeah. something. I no, go, can I take this home? And they're like, oh, it's a whole thing. We have to like log it in, and that. And I'm like, and you're like, yeah. Then okay. Then I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. have you heard this? Uh, this will make us feel bad because we keep the clothes. Uh, Steve McQueen apparently. I don't know if this is lore or not, but. He was an orphan when he was a kid. He was, he grew up in an orphanage for a little while. Oh. And I guess when he would do films, he would tell the wardrobe department that he would like to keep the majority of the costumes. And of course they would give him his own, but then he would ask for extras for others for like 
hmm. you know, for if there was background fitting that they wanted everyone in certain, you know, clothing or yeah. other actors. And they would, of course, give it to him because, you know, he was Steve McQueen and yeah. they were like, he's Movie the fucking star. shit. Who cares? That's cool. And then it got found years later, I think after his passing, I think this was all posthumously found out, that he would give, um, he would go to these orphanages and drop off all these clothes from set. He wouldn't keep any of it. He would give it away, hoping that, you know, these it would just provide more clothing for people at these orphanages. God bless so him. So don't you feel bad, Tom Ford, Triple Jacket. Yeah. 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 I mean, look. What orphan, is an orphan going to do with a Tom Ford orphans jacket? Orphans out there, if you are a... <laughs> 46 size yeah. 46 i'm i would be happy to let you borrow one of the coats for a night 46 long for sure yeah oh but yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah. give it back yeah you, you gotta give it back fucking a uh <laughs> i heard that mel brooks has kept every he has like a, a separate like wing where he has kept every costume he's ever had wow that's what i've heard and i could be wrong i know mel Brooks listens. Yeah, he does. Mel's a, Mel's a big he fan. He texted me, uh, letting me, he said he was excited. But we have to slow down our talk because he actually doesn't listen. He puts it in closed captioning. He oh. likes to eat food and he doesn't want to like eat over the- He wants to read it. Yeah. He likes reading the show. Oh, that's great. 97 yeah. years old. You can believe that. He's like, I've been reading your podcast since it came out. Yeah. That's what he says. Mel Brooks. Yeah. He was, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, what's his name also? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the uh, he's 101 now. Uh, um, the producer. Uh, what a terrible person I am. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What producer? I'll try you to know. help you put this together. He made, uh, you know, the ha happy days. Uh, uh, Ron Howard. Nope. He's 101 years old. Yeah, he made uh, uh, Sanford and Son. Oh, 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 uh, uh, yeah, the Jeffersons? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I see him. Laverne and Shirley. God, that's so annoying. I can see him too. Uh, hold on. We're going to get there. I promise yeah. we're going to get there. I promise we're going to get there. you're younger than me and we haven't been drinking. No, and I, we both, know, well, no, but I've been drinking for so many years that it has really fogged up the old noodle. Do you think? Well, this is this is kind of dark, but uh, <laughs> dementia, and Alzheimer's. Liver? No, they run in our family. Alzheimer's and dementia. Hey, <laughs> and there is an attachment for sure to alcohol. No, I don't have a fatty liver. I don't abuse alcohol. I just enjoy it a lot. Yeah, like I'm not a guy that when I drink, I'm blacking out every time. No, I'll have a, a drink here, a drink there, but I drink frequently throughout the week. I'm not like Kreischer goes off. Yeah, and he's got that brain that is pretty. You know, like he's got a. Navy SEAL brain. Yeah. I mean, you do too. I mean, yeah, obviously. But his is different. His is like, he, I've been out with that guy. He can drink four in the morning and then uh, go for a literal workout session at 8 a.m. Then I mean, not like a, I went to the gym and I pushed around something. He'll yeah. actually work out. And I mean, run on the treadmill for a couple miles and sweat, do kettlebells. Like it's, I, I've. That's impressive. It's kind of annoying. It's a little like, What's going on? My dad was able to do that, but he never got hangovers. Neither uh, did my, neither does my dad. Yeah. My dad always say would say when we'd stay up late and we go back to Chicago and go drink with family and hang out all yeah. night. He'll be up in the morning reading reading the paper, just hanging out. And my dad doesn't have coffee either. He doesn't even need like something to kick him in the morning. He'll drink a bunch of water, read the paper. That's insane. It dude, and he'll always say we'd come downstairs and my sister and I would be hung over, staying up all night, you know, like bonfire in the backyard. Yeah. And he'll be like, if you're going to hoot with the owls, you got to soar with the eagles. Get your shit together. Make breakfast and let's go. And he, like, he's so good at, like, wrapping it up and getting it moving. And you're like, well, I guess we're making breakfast. Yeah, and we would have to, like, get it together. I'm like, how is this magician doing this? My dad, I've never seen my dad not once hung over in my entire life. Uh, there is a thing where some, a very small number of people, that's a thing. They just don't get it. They don't get them. They still can't explain what a hangover is. They can't explain why it makes you feel bad. Because the alcohol leaves your body and people are like dehydrated and like drink a glass of water. Doesn't they do anything. They still can't yeah. explain why people actually feel ill. I get There's bad. all sorts of theories. They're like, it's all the sugar. And it's like, well, then you could make the same argument if you had two Snickers bars before you went to bed. Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, it's, it's still you, not. You get it? Yeah, I'll get them. Bad. No. Yeah, if I drink too much, I will definitely have a hangover. But my rule is, yeah, I have to work out. So in the morning you work out? If I, well, it can't affect work. It can't affect anything. If I, if I wake up and I'm like, if I have a day like during the pandemic where I was like, oh, are you sick? Uh, you know, do I have COVID? Nope, it's a hangover. 
uh, then I just feel very guilty. Yeah. And then, uh, then I'll probably work at around 12. But it's, then I'll try to go extra, you know, hard. Because eventually by the end of the work, I'm like, okay, now you're normal. And uh, and you're not such a piece of shit. <laughs> but, hey, it's five o'clock. But, you, but you're not a piece of shit. No, but I will tell myself, like, what, what, what's wrong with you? That's you're the, a grown that's man. That's the Irish guilt, though. Oh, it, it kicks in. Because I know a lot of people guilt. that just don't feel bad. They ruin their whole day and just be like, mm, what are you going to do? Yeah, no, I wish I had that. You work out every single day of your life? Every day. Never yeah. missed it. Never miss a day. If I'm traveling, yeah. well, even if I take the 6 a.m. flight to New York, like, uh, which is my favorite one because the plane has been at the airport overnight and you yeah. know it's not going to fuck up unless something is going on uh, with the actual airport, uh, I will get up at 3 and do a workout. And because then when I get on the plane, then I know that uh, when they go like, glass of champagne, I'll be like, I know it's 6 a.m., but yes, I'm not going anywhere for the next five hours. You. And then I can- Do you sleep? You I'll do the sleep. late flight and you sleep I, I will flight? sleep until they go, uh, we are landing. Wow. Yeah. You don't eat the food on the planes though, do you? Sometimes if I am famished, I will totally. I had and, one bad experience and I almost never eat the food anymore. You got- Oh, I got sick. As a fucking dog. And, and you're sure it was the airplane food? Couldn't have been anything else. I mean, I, I literally didn't You got eat. sick on the plane. No, 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 no. I ate the food. I went to bed. I woke up in Boston. Yeah. I, I was going to the East Coast. And uh, <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. And I was like going to the hotel and I thought, what did I have yesterday? You know, because I thought, I'm thinking yeah. last night's dinner. Yeah. You know, I call my lady. She's fine. We ate the same, we ate the same dinner, went to bed, woke up. Had a cup of coffee, went to the airport. So I didn't have, there was nothing else in me it could have been. Right. Then and, you ate on the plane. Oh my God. And I was in Boston and I, or I think so it was Boston or Philly. And I went to the hotel and for, I don't know, five, six hours straight, I was like, I don't did think you ever I, show that? Yes. Night? I was and like, you I don't think it? I'm going to perform tonight. Oh yeah, I did it. I did, did, did it, baby. That was one of the first times I remember being on stage thinking, I could shit my pants during the show. Mm. Like it's a, it's a, there's a 50, 50 shot. I actually have to go. You guys aren't going to believe this, but I have to, I have to run off the stage right now. But I'm such a, again, the Irish Catholic guilt of like, you better fucking go through with the show. Yes, don't, don't, I agree. don't bail out. Yeah. Even though my insides are like, bail out. We're going to, we're going to fucking explode. I made it through the show. Immediately went back into the dressing room. Same kind of thing. Just lost it. Yeah. Everywhere. And it was like that until like the next morning. And I finally started to level the plane a little bit. But after that, dude. Plain food, I, 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 I don't know. If I, I get nervous. Even when they say, like, it's pasta. I'm like, can pasta make you sick? Anything can make you sick. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It Salad. Gets me, can, it gets me yeah. scared. I, I just get freaked out about it because I'm like. I, well, for some strange reason, I trust plain food because Why? I'm like, well, this, this has been sanitized to a level of in that, uh, you know, this could make it to Mars and probably still be okay. Yeah, but if you're, do you know anybody that's ever worked at the airport? Yeah. When you no. see the way that they handle the stuff that comes in and out, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of no, tell you. I think you're right. you're, it's just like on one of those carts with 50 other carts that sit in the sun for 20 minutes and then it ships inside the thing. Yeah. Then, no, I, yeah, your, <laughs> your luggage is as safe to eat right. as the meals yeah, on the airplane. No, I would, yeah. So I, I'd rather just have a little, uh, a little whiskey. What if then, it's like, uh, you know, now, now like uh, Alaska Airlines, yeah, they'll have like, here's a, here's a package of Doritos and Fine. cheese that's been, you know, doesn't yeah. have to be refrigerated. Give me the cheese with the chemicals that'll kill me. I'll eat that in a heartbeat because I know yeah, that nothing's like gonna survive the cancer that. will get me in 30 years, yeah. but I won't get sick today. Okay. That's kind of how I feel. And you're okay with the quality of the bourbon? No, 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 no. It's hard to drink on a, it's hard for me to have a drink on a plane because I know friends that will, they always have a drink on the plane. They're like, refuse to not have one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. So I like, it's a lot of times it's like just Jack. Uh, the the guy in front of me was very funny on the way back yesterday from Florida. He was like, um, he's like, what kind of uh, bourbon do you have? And I kind of was like listening in and she's like, Jack Daniels, it's the whiskey. It's the whiskey. It's the one that we have. And he was like, uh, okay. Um, all right. And then you can hear him kind of like resorting to going, well, I do want to drink, but I guess, all right. And then he goes, yeah, fine. Just, I'll have a, a, a triple. And she's like, I can give you two at a time. And that's it. If you want another one, I'll come back. And he goes, that's fine. I'll take a double. And then he goes, she goes, how would you like it? And he goes, just give it to me neat. And I was, <laughs> I almost wanted to lead over and be like, you want to feel the pain? Like you want a neat Jack Daniels? Yeah. <laughs> 
It's like add some coke. Yeah, dude, dude. Unless Jack Daniels would like to sponsor. No, they don't. Trust me, they do not want to sponsor us. And Jack Daniels, uh, I'll be. I've been open about how I feel about it. And <laughs> it sounds like food. Poisoning. It's terrible. Yeah, Jack Daniels sounds like a the meal that I had that day going to Boston. Is yeah, it all still made in Tennessee? Lynchburg, terrible name. Should change it at this point. I would agree. Lynchburg, Tennessee. I remember Jack Daniels ran a commercial where it was like... Lynchburg Lemonade? Yeah, no, no. They were, they were running a commercial of like, look at all the people that work here, the good old Americans. And it was like, you could tell they were like sneaking in the black people and the, they were like, get in the photo. Get in the photo. Right. They were like purposely showing all these people working. Then they were like, see, it's not just a bunch of white people down here doing a thing in Lynchburg. But they kept saying like the pride of Lynchburg, Tennessee. And I was like, what? Why? Why Lynchburg? We should look this up. I mean, you know why. Yeah. Yeah. So what your, change the what name. What does your assistant say? Huh? What does he say? Yeah. Look up Lynchburg, Tennessee. <laughs> Look up the etymology of Lynchburg. He's not even here anymore. No, he's, dude, he's, he, he left. Know, when you're 23. He's 23. 24. He just, birthday was four days ago. Congrats. But that's what happens. They don't do, they're, they're, he, they're checked out. They Did don't. you have a mustache when you were 24? You know what's funny? I, I grew facial hair when I was 15 years old. I had a, I had like a beard. I've had this since I was like 50, 14 or 15. Mm. I started to get it. You got it when you were young, I can tell. Yeah, I was pretty young, but I never had a, I never shaved it into a mustache. Well, no, no, no. He looks like a pervert, but that's, I think he, mm. does, that's the new thing when you're young that you want to look weird. They all want to look, mm -hmm. they don't want to look like I, I do. We want to look self-confident and like, I'm, I look, I feel like I'm happy with the way I look. He wants to look like a, a scummy rat and then girls scummy his age love it. Oh, they girl, do. Oh, dude, he, this guy. Every girl we meet is like, he's so cute and funny and sweet. What's the etymology? Congratulations. And he little... rolls up the pants like that I mean, he that looks like shit. Socks. That's why they love him, because he's a babe. <laughs> what is it? You. What's the etymology? The city of Lynchburg is named after founder John Lynch. Founder John Lynch. Lynch. Quaker described as progressive for his time. In the Progress a progressive Quaker named Lynch. He believed in, in emancipating slaves. He believed in emancipation of slavery. That being said, the etymology of his name, we do know come from a very dark place. Uh, I will say that one of the last names in my family is Lynch. But you change it to McHale. Good. You took uh, the McHales. Well, no, I think that was on the other side. No, no, it was on that side. Yeah, yeah. The McHale came through, obviously. Lynch is in your, that's in your lineage. Well, the, on the, you know, on the Norwegian side, it was Smidjebakken. So Smidjebakken, the old, you good old Smidjebakken. Yeah, they changed that to Jackson. What is a Smidjebakken? Is that a thing? Do you ever know I what that think is? I think it's a, some sort of like fanciful roach. Oh, a little fancy roach. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it, I don't know what it would translate to in uh, Norwegian. I have no idea what the- uh, Look up Schmigabaken. 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 I want to know what that means. What's his name? It's McCone. You McCone. Want to talk, you want to talk about Irish. His name's McCone Corkery. Damn. McCone Corkery. Hey, McCone, do people in Ireland roll their pants up and wear white socks and nurse's shoes? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but like that look, and I'm not, I am not being. No, you are. I'm not being abusive like no, you are, somebody but, here. But let me but tell you. Like, he so when you it. see us, well, yeah. I'm much older than you. Not much. Mm, I'm 51. I'm 40. Well, 11 years is not that. Oh, We're close. Well, he, yeah, ask Mc, McCorker. Uh, he's like, that's. Corky, Corky's 24. Corky. Yeah. Um, so that look is like the look of a young, like when, when you see that look, you're like, yeah, that's the look right now. That's in. It's yep. hipster. It's good. Uh, and when you see this, when you see what's going on here, you're yep. like, these are people that stopped trying a long time ago. Do we look like old nerds? You guys look fashionable for your ages. You oh, fuck. That's what I, yeah, that's what I, yeah. Fashionable for your age. Think about, he's 24 and he, you're 40, right? Yeah. Which might as well be 60. Yeah. He's looking at me going... I hope this is not the last time I see him alive. <laughs> uh, I hope that he just has good genes and can keep going. Uh, do you feel that uh, either of us are trying too hard? Trying the appropriate amount. Appropriate amount. Okay. That's good. And we are, I am paying him so he knows better to the answer to delicately. Listen, Corky, <laughs> uh, if he fires you over this, I will hire you. <laughs> Uh, and then like jeans like that. And then a shirt that has like, so that's a vintage shirt. Yeah. Got this in DeKalb, Illinois. Yeah. I don't, 
who? He loves loose, uh, he loves free clothes. Like, you know when they give you a free uh, shirt at a, a sporting event? You this, love that. This guy would fist now, fight for that. Is that a, is that a, is that a McCorker? What's that's, your name? That's, we call him McCorky. Corky. That is, uh, uh, that is singular to you or that is what kids do? Go like, I found this amazing, I mean, because obviously growing up, People did love vintage shopping and stuff. Yeah. And that's not a shocker. This is new, though. I've always loved older stuff, but it's also a very frugal fashion habit to have. What he's and saying is cool he doesn't have one, right? a lot of money, and yeah, also it's, like, it's cool. Good, but it's a cool uh, habit. It's cool. I mean, I, I like it. I don't like... Do No, but when you walk into a bar, are other 24-year-olds dressed like yes. you? Yeah, definitely. I can say that when we go out, when okay. I see him go out. And then out. they have the sort of must, the winter's bone mustache and... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hair and but and if you see me walk into a bar and I've got this shorter haircut and I'm because I usually wear a pretty tight t-shirt because I want to constantly remind myself that I exercise and everybody would you be like yeah look at that old guy he just thinks he's he's holding on to it he's just barely he would his think, fingernails are just scraping down the wall of age he would think what is joel McHale doing in this bar that i'm at that's what he would <laughs> say mm, and he would be like you forget well, that you're I famous i'm gonna yeah. go <laughs> talk to him i'm gonna put a picture we're gonna put a picture of uh for people that are seeing in the middle of us right if now. if i walked in with this rolled up like that and then one roll because you've got two rolls on one side and one roll on the other and you just saw me like that would you be like oh that guy's with it a little bit yeah, see, you'd, you'd yeah. get some points. But otherwise, if I, because I have a 15 and 18 year old, if they saw me with this, they would be, they would go, what the fuck are you doing? See, that's doing? the other side. You can't try to dress cool when you have no. kids because they'll, no. they're going to shit on you. No, they, yeah, they, they can't. Like the 18 year old would light you up for that. It, and honestly, you'd be, that would be such a source of comedy for your 18 year old. Yes. Oh, no, that no, they're, yeah. They you can't would, give them they that. Would, they would find it hilarious. If you roll it up, you got to have the right socks. So. Oh my God! Taking another this is shot. Bad. What's wrong with those socks? There's a little too much going on. Okay, isn't it hilarious that like your shoes, these shoes, all the range that like can you like just have nurses' shoes? Yeah, nurses' shoes. I mean, those are Reeboks from 1985. From when I was a kid. Remade. These are uh, the on running yeah. Swiss. They they're, they that uh, they're supposedly tennis shoes, but these aren't really there. Tennis, tennis shoes, but uh, but it was like these look like every like Prada has these. They yeah, where they're like these are twelve hundred bucks for these nurses' shoes. Yeah, and nurses don't even wear them. Nurses are all wearing hokas. And uh, all right, so <laughs> I find it all fascinating because I am a clothes horse. If you were to come to my home and see how many clothes I have, you'd be like, you've got a real problem because I keep all the wardrobe as we've already talked about. Yeah, I have. I sold twenty suits. Uh, Go sit down right now. Yeah. He, no, you're good. He, he's my Damn. cute little roamer. You, have, the, but you keep, you've kept, you've kept everything. This right here, everything you're seeing is something that from I, a show. Yeah. Well, this is from. Yeah. No, the, this is this is a gift. But uh, yeah, this from. I will take most stuff like that and wear yeah, it because great. I don't want to go shop. I don't. I like, don't either. I don't want to go shop. Where it's, do you go? Where would you go? If somebody goes. We got to get new clothes for the vacation. Where am, I don't know where to go. Yeah, that's a I lot. literally don't have any idea. If somebody was like, "You got to go grab a couple of new things," I'd go. I, I guess I'll call someone and I call a person to have help me out. I don't, Who would I'd, help you? If I would call like somebody cool from a company that I know to be like, "Hey, will you send me like some a stylist?" Stuff? Or like a if I'm have like a partnership or like I'm friends with someone at a cool company I like is like, "Will you send me some?" Yeah, stuff? I would. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't. I don't really understand how to. I never, but I've always been this way. It's not like, oh, Hollywood. No, I've never been good. I, when I was young, never knew where to go to shop. I always like looked at other trends. You just went to a mall. Yeah, but even then, like I was so nervous in the mall because I was like, I don't want someone to see me shopping with my mom at the mall. Wait, you wouldn't go alone shopping? Well, when I got old enough, then I definitely wouldn't go. When I would go old enough to be able to go shopping alone, like 16 or 17, I never went shopping. Ever. What ever. were you wearing? <laughs> Just whatever fucking five things I got from right. my mom that Christmas. So you were not a fashion. No, I still am not a fashion. But I feel guy. like when I first met you, oh no, you were you were wearing like a nice shirt. Well, I guess that I guess that follows that you have collected good yeah. things over the years. Yeah, I'll just take it and keep. If I can, if I can, if someone's like, this is what people like now. I'm like, okay, good. 
Okay. Because I care about so many other things other than clothes. I, I can't do it. Right. I don't know what it is. But you're, you would, you're gonna scrutinize the, you know, the whatever like how how the floor mats hit in the Mercedes or the Porsche yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that yeah. has to be those kind of things. I'll go. Why yeah. does that look like that? That's this fob here is. Yeah, that shouldn't be that way. This should be a different. Definitely. Ex that's exactly that I is precisely true. Right here. Like if I see a car in public, it's if there's if I see a car in public that I genuinely don't like, like. I'll get fixated on the idea of why I don't like it, like design-wise. Like uh, everybody loves Hellcats. Everybody loves Hellcats, right, you know, like and scat not. packs, chargers, and <laughs> I un I think they are unbearably the ugliest cars I've ever seen wow. in my life. What do you I, think of that? I land? loathe the old Chargers, right? Chargers from forty years ago. Yes, I think were some of the sexiest design cars I've ever, ever seen. Literally, and the new ones look like big, big beefy plastic missteps. There is a there is an old famous. Uh, um, sculpture. Ooh, and I can't remember the guy's name. The thinker? No, 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 <laughs> no. It's the called David. It's called the. It's called like the fat Porsche or the fat fat Porsche or fat boy Porsche. And it's literally he used heat um, and air pressure to bubble a Porsche, like oh. bubble a Porsche body. And it's beautiful. It looks incredible, and it looks comical in its nature. It looks like a cartoon, but it's still right. the original body uh, of a Porsche and. That to me, this like comic version of like is ruining, what the... it, that's what that looks like. Okay. It looks like a big jokey plastic goofball machine. <clears throat> Even though it's a powerful engine, I appreciate the the physical handwork of the engine, the car itself. I'm like, why is this a big plastic nightmare? It looks like a big plastic What do you think nightmare. of that uh, Lamborghini SUV? Yeah. I feel this way about all luxury car SUVs. What are we talking about? Why do I want an SUV? Why did I buy? Right an SUV Lamborghini. I'd buy a Lamborghini if I wanted a yeah. Lamborghini. I can't afford one, but if I had one, I definitely wouldn't buy it. Like Ferrari has an SUV now. Aston Martin has an SUV now. Yeah, because they saw what Porsche did. Uh, right, it was and genius. They... But Porsche also made it look like a street SUV. It looked like kind of, uh, it was, it's a good design to yes. both of them. And so it's very simple in its execution. I like the Porsche one when it's all tricked out to look like they're in the Baja 1000. Yeah, that's cool. Those are That cool, is very but... cool. Yeah, I agree. Like with the Lamborghini, I mistake it for the Acura. Yeah. Oh, it kind of does look like. Yeah, the I'm always MDX. like, oh, that's an. Oh, that's no, that's that one costs four hundred thousand dollars more. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor has one, which blows my mind because in the driveway is like a Prius and a Camry, and really? then a Lamborghini. That's you don't hear that too <laughs> no, much, dude. It's so weird. And every time we pass him when we're walking the dog, I'm always like. What is that guy's thought process? And it's not an extravagant large house. It's a very humble home. And he has a, what are they, 500 grand? I think they're, I think they're, the, the bottom line would be 250. I think the highest end is oh. 400K. Yeah. Yeah. They I must. think that the highest end was. And I feel like I instantly saw them everywhere. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. Well, because people are doing that thing. This is what happens with American culture. We're the best at it. Where they're like, I can't afford it, but I'm willing to pay three grand a month for something that yeah. I can't afford. But people will do it. Yeah, people they don't will. Care. People will operate in debt forever. God bless, dude. What's the worst debt you've ever been in when you were struggling? When you were on your way up? No, I never had a ton of debt. You were uh, never a. You no, were never a fool. because in college I lived at home. Huh. Uh, I lived in a. I lived on campus. I've li I mean, I grew up in. I grew up in Seattle, and I went to the University of Washington. And Huskies. Yeah, let's go Huskies. Go Huskies. And the whole we time you were going good. to college, Penix you, you lived is at our home. Quarterback. Uh, for the first two months I lived in a fraternity and I hated it so much. Can I guess? Sure. Sig Kai. No. Sig Ep. No. <laughs> <laughs> I only know like three of them. Okay. No Sigma in there. No. You were a, uh. This is, this is a oh, weird Hold on, I'm going to get it, dude. I can feel right. it. I can feel it in my head. Is there a Delta in there? No. Gamma Phi Beta. Gamma Phi Beta. No, that's a sorority. Oh, it is? Yeah. I have no idea. The only one, the only, I, I only know a handful. I only know the ones that I saw. Only the parties that I stumbled into what I know. Right. What was the one you were in? Theta Chi. Theta Chi. I just said it. Theta Chi. You're not guessing. Proud of it? Of the way you're saying it? Yeah, Theta Chi. Well, you're saying it right, but it I seems like it. you you did not. Sounds like I guessed Joel McHale's. I told you fraternity. what it was, and then you, then you said it like you Pretty guessed it. Pretty good guess, Andrew. Thank Wasn't you. Wasn't a guess. It was a guess. I guessed it right on the nose. Corky, I'm sorry for your boss. Cork, 
Theta Chi. Theta Chi, uh, which was has been thrown off campus. Is there uh, a slogan? Uh, Theraposa Chi Air. Theraposa Chi Air. I think. Yeah. I don't know what that no, Don't means. look at me. I have no idea. I only partied at fraternities. I couldn't get no, in. No, I hated it. I hated all the guys. Uh, I didn't like, I mean, I'm, I actually know one of the, one of them I knew beforehand. Yeah. And there was a handful of good guys, but it was just, just, I was like, oh, this is just a breeding ground for uh, racism, alcoholism, and, uh, you know, sexism and sex, <sighs> sex abuse. I was like, this is, I got it. This is why well, they were like, we're all brothers. I'm like, what are we, what's, uh, what are we uniting around? Uh, Booze. and so I got out. Yeah. I, and then I just lived at home and I did. Yeah. I was, it was, it worked out great. My mom worked at the university, so we would commute each morning together. Yeah. That's the cutest shit I've ever heard. Yeah. I would drive. And strangely, my mom is at, at that time we were, I was a pretty aggressive driver and like, was always slightly road ragey mm -hmm. and she was kind of the same way. So Love it. it was a great, so bonding. was my mom. We're that way. Yeah. My I dad's have, the opposite. I have kind of been able to become more reasonable as my cars got more expensive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I should probably not engage in this. Uh, when people challenge me to race, I'm like, what the fuck? Why would I? What, well, fuck you. Yeah. But Go when you're your young, thing. you're doing it. Oh, yeah. You're like, yeah. I'll, what did your mom do at the school? Uh, she worked f uh, in, well, she had been a newspaper editor, and then she worked, uh, she ran the PR department for the University of Washington Hospital. Oh wow! Yeah, she is no. Dummy. She's a bad bitch. She knew her. She knew her stuff. And uh, anyway, uh, that was a long way to say that uh, I did not like being in a fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would go into the sororities, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, this is what I want to live here." Not because it was girls, but because I was like, it was so clean. Yeah, they had clean food. Yeah, like it seemed so nice. It didn't smell like a mm -hmm. like a shelter, right? And uh, it's so yeah. But my friend Rody, I'm friends with him today. And shout out to Rody, Rody Gadara, Rody, wherever you man. are, uh, lives in Bellevue. I know he is Bellevue, great place. Great, it's really come up. Google, right? No, no, Redmond. Red, that's Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah. Sorry, I, uh, my college girlfriend was Redmond. She went to Redmond. She was no, no, no. She's born and raised there. But she went to Redmond High School, or there's a couple. I don't know actually. I don't know what high school she went to. Threw a knife at me. That's when we broke up. Seattle. What kind of knife? That sounds pretty Northwesty to me. She threw a. Uh, it was like a dull kitchen knife. Didn't hit. By the way, bad aim. Missed by like four feet. How long ago did she? Did you break up with her? This is a college. It's 20 years ago. Oh, okay. It's a long, long time ago. Yeah. But it was a good throw. I'm not going to lie. It's just bad aim. Good throw because end over end. I thought, man, if it gets yeah. the right end, she's going right through my chest. I think, uh, you know, there's a, uh, to think that everyone thinks that uh, the Northwest is a kind of bookish, uh, mm -mm. you know, androgynous sort of like, uh, but there's a, you know, a lot of violence and serial killing. Yeah. 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 And, the woods, uh, man. Anywhere, anywhere there's a lot of wooded area. Yeah. Scary shit goes down in the woods. Yeah. I don't know if you know this or care or who cares, but I do want to tell you, this is pretty, the odd connection. Our song for Bobby and I show, The Bad Friends Show, people have called this out, but in it, it says, you two are bad friends. And over the years, people have finally found out it's actually from Community, an episode of Community. Oh. I had the potential to watch Blade. You two are bad friends. Bad. Uh, Allison Bree. Yeah. Allison Bree, is that who said it, right? She played Annie. Allison Bree, I think, was pointing at Danny Pudi and um, someone else. Donald Glo Was it Donald and Danny? We're in the room together, and Allison walks in. I don't in. know them. Yeah, you, you do. yes, you do very well. All you right. worked with them for a very long time. The, uh, she, Allison Bree walks in with, I want to say... Gillian? Gillian. I think it, she was in the scene with her, but she points at them. And she says, you two are bad friends. And that's the intro for Bad Friends Show. And to this day, I've told Bobby, I hope we don't get sued by NBC. Wow. Did you tell Allison? For using ever? that clip. No, I've, I don't, I, you know, I've only met her once th uh, through uh, Franco. Right. At, at a friend's party. Very, very wonderful people, by the way. Yes. Extremely nice. You're probably yeah. the, the worst person from that show. I would agree. Yeah. But it's funny that I think of, because every time I think about it, I think, 
we have fans that know it or that dig and think about I'll it. I'll take that. And it's kind yeah. of beautiful because our fans like are obsessed with that show. And so when people find out it's from community, they get like they the get, cult, the cult thing that happened from that show. You kind of only get once or tw- once in your career, twice if you're very lucky. Yeah, I know. I agree. And it's, at, it's, at the it's time wild. it was not, you know, when it's not part of the story, but you know, it's like at the time we were constantly almost canceled and then were. So it's like arrested development. It's the same thing. Yeah. Like, and then, like, then the happen? groundswell of support, you know, trickle. It, it's like, uh, you know, just a slowly rising river. And, uh, and then, um, you know, uh, the streamers really changed everything over the yeah. pandemic and people started watching it. It's so wild how fa- it got so much more famous in the last four years than it ever. It really did. Believe me. Like that literally we would get to the end of our, we do our episodes and then they'd be like, can this last one be the season and series finale? And which was a great vote of confidence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, it, it, but it, it, it was one of those, we all, as we sat around doing it, we're like, we know, I know this is, we, I know this is good. What we're doing. Yeah. We're, this is a funny thing we're doing. It was. And, uh, or is. And usually I, I'll be the first to go like, oh, this is a pile of crap. Let's get it. Let's just milk this until it's over. Uh, mm-hmm. but this, uh, this was, I was like, every time we'd read the scripts, I'd be like, this is a gift. This is a, this is a Christmas gift. It was very good. It was very, a solid show. Genuinely like very good. And every time I saw it, I was like, this is just a great collection of talented people. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's interesting that it, when it happens that way, you're like, man, this is a lot of talented people on one show. Sometimes you get a couple of people that really are moving the machine and then, you know, not yeah. to offend, but uh, just sometimes it doesn't, it's not, it's never, Absolutely. It's, it's not that consistent. Yeah. Okay. Let's, because I don't want to harp on that show too much. I don't want to, I don't want to give you, you too much praise. You want to make my ego even bigger? Yeah. I want to go down. Great. Okay. Let's talk about some of the shows I've been on that have been Crap canceled. ones. Give me the crappiest one that you ever did. What's the crappiest show? That you felt like you were like, this is not even, I'm not doing a good job. The show's not that good. Oh. What's the biggest pile of shit you ever took? Um, it's a good question. I can I, name it because I have them lined up. I texted oh, myself. Oh, please. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of, mm, of things that I've been in that I, I, have be, I have been in things where I'm like, I don't know if I was any good in that. I'm just going to. Uh, I knew I did uh, a movie with Robin Williams called uh, Merry Friggin' Christmas or, and it, it was this incredible cast and uh, I, it, and it's freaking Robin Williams. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, and that was the greatest gift of the whole thing is that I got to know him and, uh, but it was not a great movie and, and it uh, tanked. Yeah, it tanked. Uh, it's gotten a strange little bit of life, but, uh, but it was, it just all, yeah, it was, it was a great cast. And I was like, I didn't feel great in it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think it was okay. Uh, Robin Williams, of course, brought it every fucking moment yeah. because he's Robin Williams and, uh, and the, the other people in it were like, so I was, yeah, that's when I'm like, oh, yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. Do, do you think it was because you did poorly or it just wasn't written that well? Boy, that's a good question. Some I think sometimes it's like baking a fucking cake uh, where it's like, uh, it just didn't happen. And yeah, uh, yeah I really wanted it to. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, that was one of those ones where I'm like, well, you know, can't win them all. Did you ever have a thought? Because I some people have these, some people don't. When it was done and it was all over and it didn't do well. Do you ever have that looming fear that you're like, is this going to really fucking hurt my career? Like, is this going to put a dent on my career? Yeah, no, I've thought stuff about like, well, this is a big swing. I'm the lead in this movie. And it didn't, it just didn't really, well, Robin also died, uh, which was. Which was your fault. You, oh, thank you. Much. We've all said I agree. that. I've gotten text messages that, you know. He would agree I'm a murderer. That's Mikhail's fault. Uh, but he, yeah, no. So that obviously put a pall on the thing. And, uh, but you haven't had a lot of hiccups, man. You've worked so consistently for oh, a long, long time. So it's just like, no, it, I am, I am, I, I would absolutely agree. I am B minus level all the way. <laughs> I am, I am a consistent. Yeah. No, you're great. No, you're wonderful, con- man. You're very talented and so, uh, uh, dedicated and committed to making good stuff and trying a lot of different things that. I think you, I've never seen a hiccup where I'm like, oof, man, this guy really is shit in the bed. Just you wait. Yeah, you're on your way. 
I will. <laughs> I will really fuck one of these up. No, uh, it's, but well, it's interesting because a lot of actors get that fear. I don't believe you, but... Uh, no, they do, I'm serious. You, a lot of people get that fear where it's like they make a thing that might bomb and then they're like, I don't know if I'm ever going to work again. I watched the documentary the other night about Catherine Hepburn and, and it was just this like looming constant thing they spoke about where she was like, she made a lot of bad shit. Like she had about five years of just... Crappy movies. Do- I mean, not crappy. They were atro- like poorly written, poorly acted. She would do accents in some of them where it was like, what the fuck is that? It was like really bad. Yeah. And she even, she her confidence, which is probably part of her success, she couldn't have given a fuck. It like didn't even matter to her. It was like, God, she doesn't even, she knows it tanked, didn't care, was like, well, whatever. She was, they're like, well, you're broke now. I mean, you don't have any more money because back then also- it's like anybody in that world, they would like take the money and then throw it away. They're like, come on, yeah. give me, give me the money. I'll buy another house, buy a boat, you know? Yeah. And they didn't have, there was no world of like saving for the future. So she would tank a bunch of stuff and then finally things started to hit, but she would just go back to Broadway or go back to theater and figure it out. But her, you know, I guess like her kind of flippantness about it was impressive that she was like, come on over, I don't fucking. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah. Because today you're like, is this an end of time for me? I feel like, though, that back then, you know, like there wasn't as many outlets to be on. Yeah. You know, it was like, well, you're the mood. You're I mean, and it's still to this day. I mean, when people are like we are investing in you as going to be the and obviously a lot of the time the movie star gets blamed, which they shouldn't a lot of the time because it yeah. can get fucked up in other ways. Uh, but yeah, so I think there are those stakes somewhat still, uh, obviously, I don't know, but fuck it. But I just, I'm always like, uh, shot, like sawed off shotgun blast approach. And I, I was like, just do, just do everything and something will maybe work. But if not, I'm going to, I'm always like, I don't have to have a real job. This is insane that I can still go. People are like, are you sure you want to be on that game show? I was like, fuck, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? It's fun. It's good times. And uh, yeah, I love it. So, uh, I mean, now it, those game shows are all, now that The Rock and Jamie Foxx and fucking everybody hosts, it all changed everything. But yeah, uh, but yeah I just always, I'm always like, yeah, let's say, say yes. Unless, say yes. Unless it's like ritual murder. Then say yes if they have an out plan, if they have an exit plan. Yeah, no. Yeah. If they're like, dude, we know how to get away with this murder. You're like, all right, I'll do it. I don't know. I feel like when you start opening up that circle. Okay, dude, just kill someone already with me. I want to thank you for being if on the show. If it's just two people, maybe. It's just us. We're going to go do it right now. Have you read that book, Conspiracy, about the takedown of Gawker? No. It's pretty great. It's, is it? Yeah, they're doing now, I think one of the news channels is taking that book and has turned it into a series. But it is fascinating Exper- what is it the takedown of t- what is you it? remember gawker yeah and gawker was famous for putting anything up and yeah. peter Thiel, uh he you know he he got he basically was outed by gawker and he was then he was like i'm going to take them down uh but he did it in secret oh that's smooth it's pretty and but they talk about conspiracies in the first like how you keep something secret yeah and this is like a person of one keeping a secret is perfect, right? Anybody Nobody knows. Can, no one knows except for the person who knows. Uh-huh. When you get to two, you're still pretty good. Uh, that's not. The, then when you get to three, it's, it's over. It's going to get out. Yeah, three is over. And that's why. Yeah, that's why when people are like, well, the Earth is flat. I'm like, who's keeping the fucking secret? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because as you know, I'm like, even in, you know, think about all the wars where people like, if you get off this boat, don't say fucking anything to anyone about where we're going. Because yeah. they all, everybody finds and out. And the earth is flat. We do know that for a fact. Okay. I just was on a flight the other day. Got it felt pretty flat to me, dude. Look out the window. Look pretty okay. flat to See, me. this is why. Pretty flat to me, bud. Ugh, I, uh, thank you for having thank me. Thank you, you for are, coming on the show. I really you've appreciate You've always you. been really nice. Yep. Really cool. Thank you. And, um... Your hair is... Throw in funny. Will you throw in funny? Your hair is amazing. It's very red. You've got really good muscle tone. Thank you. Ditto. Just say funny. I love the shoes. Just say funny Black once. jeans are really cool. Please say funny. These are charcoal. You're a very good actor. Please say funny. I'm begging you at this point. 
you'll give me a bottle of whiskey, right? I will do. And you're fine. Uh, sorry? I'm fine. Oh, man. Really squeezed it out. Um, Joe McHale. Uh, you are. No, no, no. Don't do it now, dude. Remember that corporate gig we did? Oh, my God. Before you go. That was. A- I, I, I've talked about it on. I've talked about it on Bad Friends, I think. But I've marked this as the worst corporate gig I've ever done in my entire life. And I'll do the quickest synopsis. But it was crazy. Me, you, Gary Veter, um, uh, 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 Alonzo Bowden, and I feel like there was one more. We got paid by, this is great. This is a great quick story. We got paid by Jim Beam. Jim Beam, of course. Thank you, Jim. Was recently acquired and at that time by Suntory Whiskey, a Japanese yeah. whiskey company. Now, I wasn't really privy to this. So I thought it was going to be a bunch of good old boys, like good old boys, like Kentucky good old boys. Yeah. And- we got a check. We were in the back. We were having dinner and drinks. And I remember walking up to you and being like, hey, man. And you're like, hey, man. And you looked exhausted. And I was like, is everything okay? And you had already been there for two yeah, days we had hosting. Done, yeah, yeah. I was there just one night doing it. I'd also gone out that night. So I was. You would just look like you were like super bummed. And uh, I said to Vitor, I was like, what's the deal with Mikhail, man? What's that all about? And he's like, I don't know, maybe just fucking tired of hosting and he's like exhausted and has to be like a master of ceremonies all night. And (laughs) I remember thinking, I could kill this. This is easy, man. This ain't shit. Like we do this all the time. I got out there and it was like 500 Japanese men in business suits eating at round tables, like eating dinner. Yeah, they were all eating. While we were doing jokes. And I ate such a bag of shit. I mean, it was like, I've never bombed. I... I was sweating 15 minutes, like pouring sweat through 15 minutes. And uh, the guy also had said no cussing, no dirtiness, right? clean, everything had to be clean. And I don't know if you remember this, but oh, I, I was in the back with Bowden. I mean, with Gary Veter and Alonzo was about to go on. And uh, <laughs> they were like, don't cuss, no dirtiness, no foul language, you know, no sex stuff. They wanted it pretty clean. Mm-hmm. And it's Vegas, by the way. And after bombing, Vita and I were like just sitting there kind of just contemplating life. Uh, he did good. Uh, and Alonzo gets up and he says to this quiet room, he's like, y'all ever seen an N-word this big before? And they loved it. And I was like, all we needed to do was say the N-word, Gary. And they would have loved us. <laughs> and he crushed. That's, he crushed. And yeah. Alonzo destroyed. I mean, obviously he's a phenomenal comic anyway, yeah. but- but he knew. He broke this weird tension of like, it was just kind of, the, the reception was supple. It was like uh, pff, fluffy and light and nothing was, re- yeah. nobody was really like, this is f- like losing it, having a good time. You probably did great. I didn't even see yours. I was in the back. Uh, I, I did just fine. Str- it, I was also mostly hosting. Crumbling. So I was just kind of hosting in between. I so. was crumbling, dude. I, I, it hurt so much to get off stage to, cause I'd never bombed at a corporate like that. That was unique. That'll stick in, that'll stick with me for the rest of my life. And that's part of my memory with you. Yeah. I mean, so when you see me, it must be, I think about you when I see you, I think yeah. about Vegas, Jim Beam, some, no, times. I remember, but it's always fun. Cause you're like now, you know, when things go well, you're like, great. Yeah, but then you remember the, that was so hard. You remember when me. you're breaking and I, and I bombed and I was like, Ooh, yeah, it hurts. I'll never forget that. That, that will be, do you know what's your worst bomb story before you go? Do you have like a, one yeah, of these? I did. Um, it was at the, um, Anaheim spectrum or whatever. It's a big, it was a big venue it was for power one Oh six. Yeah. And, uh, it was a big line of comics, which is a hip hop station out here yeah. in, uh, in Los Angeles. And Carlos Mencia was the closer. Oh yeah. And I was going on second to last. Who else was on? Do you remember? I do not remember. Damn. I was the only white guy on there. Yeah. I was just going to say you had uh, to be the only on a power 106 show. Yeah. They were pretty poorly cast by the way. Not happy to see me when <laughs> no, I walked no, out. No, uh, no they, way. It was screaming and yelling and uh, there was nothing I could do. And in those situations, sometimes I get this weird, it's either it, the, I get the, the fight of fight or flight kicks in. Mm-hmm. And so I turned the clock around and showed them how much time I had. That's funny. And I was like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> and it, they, it still didn't work. Yeah. Uh, some, it were, yeah, they were just fuck. Hey, I, and it was the, one of the only times I walked off stage and I, everyone has these wide eyed looks on their faces. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, and then the, the promoter was like, you, you need to get out of here. 
He's like, here's a check. Go home. Yeah, immediately. he's like, get, get out as fast as you can because <laughs> someone's going to kill you. They was hate Big you Boy so hosting it? Was it his? Because Big Boy used to do like a big. He, uh, that, he, I, he did not host. Maybe he did host it, but I didn't meet him because they I used came to do in, big comedy shows for that. And I remember huge, yeah. When I first moved to LA, I was like, man, that'd be so cool to be on one of those things. And it was all big name comics. And, you know, they would sell a fuckload of tickets. Yeah. And I was like, that's got to be the coolest thing in the world. Not for Joel McHale. Not that time. <laughs> Oof. That, I drove out because Carlos Mencia went on. Yeah. And so they were like, get out now while no one's like. Yeah, while well, you still like, can. See if the, anyone's waiting for you. Oh, Yeah, you're I leaving ate, in the seventh. Yeah, that was, I ate shit. You got to get out. Sometimes it's got to happen. It makes you a stronger human being. It does. It makes you go like, right, you can, you can really lose the game bad. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> That's a blowout. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, please watch, please, please, please watch the, hopefully the next season when it comes back. Right? Yeah. Animal Control. Animal Control. And watch Crime Scene Kitchen And watch Kitchen Crime Scene now. Kitchen right now on Fox. It's available. Yeah. House of Villains in the fall. House of Villains is going to be coming up in the fall. That'll be on uh, E of all places. On E. Yeah. Your, li your lifelong buds <laughs> over at E. Uh, just can't yes. break. Just, just we, can't break up. Just, yes. It's a That's very your ex you keep going back codependent. to. Codependent. Well, it's a comfy bed. Uh, yeah. They, it's a nice fuck, comfy bed over there. I mean, other one they canceled the suit. <laughs> yeah. But hey. It's fine. Here we are. It's fine. We move forward. Yeah. Uh, we drive. end the show the same way. Uh, you look into that camera right there. You say one word or or into one phrase. One. Yeah. One word or one phrase to end the episode. Used to be a used to be a word. Some people wanted a phrase. So one word or one phrase to end the episode whenever you're ready. I don't know what does make me think of this, but Ditka. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.